Okay, I'm showing a little Damascus or pattern welded steel video. I have a piece in here that I've already started. I forgot to do the video in the first place, so I'll pick up where I'm at. I basically have taken uh, 1084, 15 and 20. I cut them up into little pieces, and then I kind of grind them or prep them and stack them side by side. I start this uh, with 17 layers of steel. Um, that's what I'm at right now. I've just done my initial forge weld and I'm starting to draw it out. And, uh, if you hang tight, I'll show you how that happens. Here's my uh, piece of 18 that's now forge welded into one and I'm going to try to um, de decrease the thickness this way, the width, because uh, I'm going to do a twist on this one. Now that's always the ultimate uh, decider if you've got a good forge weld because when you put these lateral stresses it's real easy to get delamination if you don't have a good weld. But this baby's looking good, hang tight. Got to get some slag out of my forge. Try to make sense of that. So this here piece now is uh, what 12? Let me look. 10 inches long. What I'll probably do is cut it into three pieces, just right through it. Let me let it cool down some. Then I need to take it to the grinder, finish it, because you don't want to try to forge weld uh, these scaled up surfaces. It's a good way to get flaws in your welds. Uh, so I'm going to take it to the um, grinder after I cut it up you'll see or actually 
Uh, maybe I'll even take it to the grinder before I cut it. Sometimes that's easier, but either way, you'll see here in the next step. Okay, so back at a piece of Damascus. So basically, I want to re, um, I want to back up and kind of restate what has happened so far here. So this is my billet. Right now, this billet is um, 19 layers of steel. Um, I use alternating either 1095 or 1084. Um, this happens to be a piece of 1095, but I believe this billet is actually 1084, alternating with 15 and 20. Um, so I buy my steel and, and lengths that are all pre-cut, one and a half inches wide, uh, about that thick, um, usually four or six foot sections from New Jersey Steel Baron, um, a good reliable source of Damascus steel. So anyhow, when I start, I have these 19 or so layers alternate to, uh, alternately stacked. Um, I always leave one, that's what this is, extra long piece in the original billet which will be a handle for me usually through the whole forging process but sometimes it will break off so what i've done so far which you've seen a little earlier is i've taken and forge welded the initial 19 pieces to each other so they're now one solid piece um, and i've drawn them out to uh, about 10 inches long it's about uh, two inches wide and the billet is about three quarters of an inch thick right now so what we're going to do is we're going to mark it off here um, roughly three and a quarter inches uh, each one and then we'll um, go a little bit smaller here about like that and now i'm going to cut these right across this line here then I'll have three pieces that you'll see in a second that I'll, I'll tack with the MIG welder to get them just to hold while I uh, forge weld again so okay so as you guys just saw this stuff is not easy to cut um, however once you cut a piece of pattern welded steel it's where you can really see if you have good welds um, you can see how badly this billet heated up while I was cutting it I can't even touch those yet um, but I'm gonna dip them to cool them and then finish them and I'll show you how I stack them to weld them okay now a little trick here is I'm getting ready to finish grinding these off um, these two pieces one is gonna go on each side so I only need to finish one side of them so it'll save me some grind time there's no sense in doing one side that has scale on it because it's not going to be on the uh, inside of the billet uh, this piece however is going to be in the center of the billet so both sides are going to need to be finished off okay so i'm going to do that real quick and then i'll show you what it looks like welded take a second and a um, little tidbit about Damascus or pattern oil steel um, work smart as best you can um, when you're grinding these littler pieces they're almost impossible to hold on 
So I just use these magnets. They hold it tight enough I can hold it right against my grinder. Um, and then the key here, see if I can touch this yet, on these is um, you got to grind these smooth. You, you can't leave imperfections in these pieces that are going to mate because they'll literally trap in a, a cavity or an inclusion there, uh, which will be a defect in your end product. And you may not notice it until after hours more of work. And it's a pretty big letdown when you get that far and you find out that you uh, just skipped a step and it cost you a knife. So I've got these ones good now. Uh, Okay, so what you see here now is a uh, billet ready to go. Again, each of these is 19 layers, so, so say roughly 60 layers of steel in the final billet. Um, yeah, I didn't do a great job of measuring, but oh well, it's fine. It doesn't matter. This isn't a science of preciseness. It's uh, pretty brute. Uh, all I've done is taken the MIG welder, you can see, and tacked it just enough to hold it together. Um, once I get it up... Okay, my forge has been sitting um, idle here for a while, and this is where um, you get it to kind of set up. And uh, before I fire it back up and do another forge weld, what I want to do is get down in here, and they're going to be a nice size clinker usually. And that all depends on the coal that I'm burning. There's, no, not too bad actually. I can't get it to come up. There it is. Okay, so this, you, I don't know if you can hear that. That's why they call it a clinker. So it's a metal, metal byproducts, waste, junk. Uh, it'll block the tear where the air comes up. So you want to get rid of that, especially if you're getting ready to do another forge with it. So now, I'll like this I'll actually let some of this hot stuff drain out of here I have good airflow and I should be good to go so what I gotta do here okay this is starting to come up to temperature uh, the first weld that you do you know uh, on each billet is actually the most important I'm trying to do this one handed sorry so don't rush your welds. So you can see it's looking good. Not ready though. Keeping it right in the heart of the fire. This is a nice uh, flame here. It's a real um, uh, reduced flame type that's uh, optimal for forge welding because oxygen is contaminated in a forge weld. So stand by. I'm going to do a little bit of flux here in just a second just to make sure it's ready and then we'll go from there.
first weld or heat um, all, I, all I'm attempting to do is just set my welds and they look good uh, from here on now I can start doing some pretty significant crunching on the press so stand by Okay, my handle finally broke off, which happens eventually. So we'll call it a day for this. This is 60, roughly 60 layers. Um, my, my goal now is going to be to get a new handle on it and then draw it out and try to keep it as square as I can. Uh, Got to get it down a lot skinnier than this or I won't be able to twist it. It's just too thick still. Uh, so more to come, but that's going to be a wrap for today.